Hello guys, Colin here. By considering the guitar string as a one-dimensional object, that is a line with length as the only dimension we choose to focus on, we can explain the motion of a guitar string using some very basic wave physics. The guitar string rests on the nut and the bridge of the instrument, defining our boundary conditions and giving us a working area of length L for open strings. L in reality is the scale length of your instrument which differs in physical length depending on the model of your guitar. Les Pauls have a shorter scale length than Strats, which have a shorter scale length than bass guitars for example, but we are going to use the generic length L because the physics applies regardless of the specific string length, which means you can also apply all of this to any fretted note. When we strike our string, it begins to vibrate and sets up standing waves on the string, but it can only vibrate in a few very specific ways as defined by our boundary conditions. The nut and bridge both form fixed node points on the string, that is places where no movement of the string can occur. So the only waves that can manifest themselves on the string are ones that match up to these fixed nodes. For example, all of these are possible and all of these are not. Each of the examples possible is a mode of vibration or a harmonic. The simplest, which looks like this, is called the fundamental and has wavelength 2L. That is, it would take two scale lengths for the wave to get back to its starting point. The second harmonic is this, with wavelength L, and so on, and so on. The wavelength of each harmonic can be calculated using the following equation. Lambda equals 2L upon N, where N is the number of the harmonic we wish to calculate. From there, it's easy to work out the frequency of each harmonic as F equals V upon lambda, where V is the speed of the wave. Note that this is not the speed of sound in air, but the speed of the wave propagation in the string, which is derived from the tension and mass per unit length of the string. Combining our equations now, we can see that frequency equals Vn upon 2L. Now, if we assume that string tension remains constant, that is, we're not bending strings, diving the whammy bar, or applying vibrato of any kind, then V also remains constant. In fact, so does everything else in our equation. So if we only change N, the order of the harmonic, then frequency must be a function of N. If our fundamental frequency was 100 Hz, for example, then the frequency of the second harmonic would be n equals 2 times 100 Hz, which is 200 Hz. The third harmonic would be 300 Hz, and so on. The frequency of the nth harmonic is n times the fundamental frequency. The string doesn't vibrate in simply one of these harmonics, but in many of them at the same time, forming a complex waveform made up of many frequencies. But what makes the guitar and other stringed instruments so musical is that the combination of frequencies are integer multiples of the fundamental. If this were not so, the guitar would be less of a musical instrument and more of a noise generator. The guitar is musical because of maths. And if you have liked this video and you want to see more content from me, then you can hit that subscribe button, which will notify you of all new content as it comes out. Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff. T-shirts are available as always, and there's other videos you may not have seen. But that's all for now, guys. Keep it loud, and I'll see you later.